Hey there, Rustations. So, I know what you're thinking. Concurrency and parallelism in Rust? Sounds like the most exciting thing since sliced bread. Right? I'm sure you're all just thrilled to be learning about concurrency and parallelism in Rust. Because who doesn't love wrangling threads and race conditions, right? I mean, I personally can't think of a more exciting way to spend my day than debugging deadlocks and mutexes. It's just so much fun. But seriously, concurrency and parallelism are important concepts to understand in any programming language, and Rust makes it easier than ever to do so safely. First, let's define our terms. Concurrency is the ability for multiple tasks to be in progress at the same time. Parallelism is the ability for those tasks to be executed simultaneously on multiple CPU cores. In Rust, we have a few tools at our disposal to achieve concurrency and parallelism. The most basic of these is the thread pawn function, which allows us to create a new thread to run a task concurrently with the main thread. Here's an example of how we might use spawn to print hello, world, in a separate thread. Pretty simple, right? But what if we want to execute tasks in parallel on multiple CPU cores? That's where Rust's Rayon Crate comes in. Rayon is a data parallelism library that makes it easy to parallelize iterative algorithms. Here's an example of how we can use it to sum the elements of a large vector in parallel. Easy as pie. And with Rust's ownership and borrowing rules, you can be sure that your concurrent and parallel code is safe from data races and other common pitfalls. But wait, there's more. In addition to Thread, Spawn, and Rayon, Rust also has several other tools for achieving concurrency and parallelism. For example, the MPSC module provides multiple producer, single consumer channels for sending messages between threads. Here's an example of how we might use an MPSC channel to send a string from a worker thread back to the main thread. We can also use Rust's atomic types, such as STD atomic size, to safely perform operations on shared data between threads. And for even more fine-grained control over concurrency, we can use Rust's low-level synchronization primitives, such as STD mutex and STD RW lock, to protect shared data with locks. But be careful. As with any concurrent code, it's important to consider the potential for deadlocks and race conditions, and to design your code with these potential pitfalls in mind. So we've talked about how to create and spawn threads, and how to use channels to communicate between threads. But what if we want to communicate more complex data structures, or wait for a thread to complete before continuing? For these cases, Rust provides several options. One option is to use the STD archetype to share data between threads. Here's an example of using arc to share a vector between threads.
Arc allows multiple threads to have shared access to the same data and will automatically handle the synchronization of access to that data. Finally, if we want to wait for a thread to complete before continuing, we can use Rust's thread join handle type, which represents a handle to a thread that can be used to wait for the thread to complete. Here's an example of using join to wait for a thread to complete before continuing. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.